Throughout all my journeys of exploration of both real and virtual worlds, I've always found myself coming back to one specific place. A place of fog, of abandoned lost spaces, of dead empty worlds. Abandoned malls still echoing the sounds of what was before. Amusement parks and nostalgic childhood memory. Melancholy ghost towns, shrouded in mist and marked by abandonment. Spaces that once held life, but now stand as a testament to the fleeting nature of existence. The peaceful loneliness that pervades these worlds is cut by an eerie atmosphere, giving off the sense of being the only one left alive in a vast empty world. A sense that something, just off in a distance, is watching. A game from my childhood that always gave me similar feelings and is a great example of this is the original Silent Hill. Silent Hill's ability to create a unique and haunting atmosphere during its era was truly something else. But due to the limitations of the technology at the time, the game's developers had to envelop the entire town in thick fog, a sneaky way to hide the game's short render distance. This fog was later transformed into a game mechanic within itself and was worked into the game's lore. The town is shrouded in thick fog that blurs the distinction between dream and reality, creating a thick and eerie atmosphere that allows strange creatures and dead souls to roam, as the boundaries between realities are blurred. The use of atmosphere and otherworldly elements is a technique often employed by artists to create a surreal and unsettling rendition of real life places. One artist who has successfully adopted this style is Ty Martinez, whose artwork is known for its nightmarish qualities. Martinez's approach involves the manipulation and distortion of real life locations, which creates an eerie and unsettling feeling for his viewer. The sense of unease and disorientation that his artwork elicits is similar to the experience of navigating the foggy town in Silent Hill. Throughout his series of work, Martinez tells a story of a world haunted by strange creatures, stalking the people living in them. Floating about in the sky, they drift with unknown powers that leave the viewer wondering just what they're capable of. Even the animals in Martinez's world are strange possessing alien-like abilities that add to the surreal nature of his work. As one looks closer, they will notice entities walking his realm, distorted and sometimes have elongated or exaggerated body parts, and sometimes barely even look human. Martinez's use of atmosphere and otherworldly elements is not just an artistic technique, but an opportunity to invite the viewer into a new reality. His surreal and nightmarish renditions of real life places allows us to explore and experience an entirely different world, which is both fascinating and terrifying at the same time. Trevor Henderson is another artist that uses surreal and horror to create his artwork. Both artists manipulate and distort real life places to create a sense of unease and disorientation. Henderson's work blurs the line between reality and fiction with his found footage style. His creatures of fog and shadow seem to appear out of nowhere, crawling through empty corridors, looming around every corner, creating a post-apocalyptic feel to his world. Like Martinez, Henderson's creatures are often unsettling in ways hard to explain. The use of darkness and shadow helps to create a sense of mystery and foreboding. Both artists share a similar emphasis on creating a unique and unsettling atmosphere, with their works drawn inspiration from the unknown and otherworldly.
Creatures of the Fog is a short horror web series by Christian Cizerba. The first episode begins as our cameraman runs through a field while pointing his camera at a dark, foggy sky, trying to capture something. Birds flock as strange sounds are heard. He then turns around and we see this. As our character explores his world further, we see strange things growing out of the side of buildings. An unbelievably large human-like creature is reaching out of the skies. The world that Christian is creating through these short films needs no explanation for the idea to be transmuted perfectly. Creatures of the Fog is a perfect eldritch horror web series. While it is short and sweet, the terror and mystery of his world is at an all-time high as we are left to make some sort of sense of the events that have turned his world into a both terrifying and fascinating nightmare. This feeling that is protracted in all these real life places, artworks, and even games like Silent Hill is exactly what I'm talking about here. Kinophobia is mainly understood as being the fear of empty places. But this isn't just that, it's the idea of something more. It's the uneasiness one gets from a dying world and of what might live within that world. There is nothing left on this earth for us. This is the end. I'm so, so scared. They are here. A valley of death. The husk of a soldier. A gathering of souls. An artist at play. The end of a long drive. A cathedral from hell. A city of bone. Tower of Babylon, Cart of Rust, Creature from the Unknown, A Biker's Journey, A Throne of Death. 
the Wabakinski's art, we are set on to explore a strange alien world of decay and death. Wide open hazy landscape expand as far as the eye can see. Uncanny and bizarre creatures and structures populate this strange world. The boundaries between structure and form and the natural environment have no say here, as they both blend and fuse into something other. Isolation, anxiety, dread, disconnect, and melancholy are emotions that rule this place. The dreamlike otherworldly atmosphere of his liminal spaces merge with the fog-shrouded landscapes of horror, creating a strange, beautiful, and disturbing environment ripe for exploration. There's a profound sense of sadness here that's beyond my ability to explain. Bikinski's art is a perfect example of a dying world. While his art is the most out there of the bunch, the emotions that link all these pieces together are the same. Whether it's Bikinski, Martinez, Silent Hill, or Christian Cicerbus. Someone like Todd Haida with his series Homes at Night and Outskirts is able to capture liminal spaces of ordinary life. The use of fog, light, and glow usher in a dreamlike feel to his worlds. The blend of an empty world, homes left abandoned, with lights still on. While his photographs are grounded in reality, there exists within them a loneliness hard to ignore. Aristotle Rufanis' project Alone Together seeks to explore the concept relationship between people and the urban environment that surrounds them. The images in his project are powerful representation of the disconnect that many feel in the modern world. Despite being surrounded by countless others, Rufanis' use of light and framing effectively conveys the sense of being alone in a crowded space, where people are often lost in their own thoughts and emotions. By focusing on the textures and patterns of the urban environment, Rofanis highlights the beauty and intricacies of these spaces. Even as he draws attention to the senses of isolation that they can create. Through his work, he offers the viewer a glimpse into the mental and emotion states of people living in today's cities. Someone like Thomas Boulay does the same with his brutalist series of colossal structures, giving us another point of view on the same idea. Glowing strongly in shadow, mountains of steel and concrete, structures beyond human capability. His cityscapes are of a dystopian magnitude, reminiscent of something you would see out of Blade Runner or some dystopian sci-fi film. When asked about his style, Bolek responded, I think enigmatic and hypnagogic are interesting words that can describe my style. I always try to make my work saturated with an atmosphere of mystery. I'm looking for a certain reflection in them, for the feeling of being lost and isolated, and finding beauty and a sense of spirituality in the darkness. Todd, Rufanis, and Bolag all explore the same theme of melancholy loneliness in a modern world, as one doesn't need to be in some nightmarish realm to feel such emotions. Sometimes just being in the right place at the right time does the job. The game loads, and we find ourselves in a car, surrounded by darkness. We turn on the engine and the headlights, to find ourselves in a vehicle graveyard of sorts, surrounded by thick smog, restricting our vision just as much as the darkness that was there before.
We are given no instructions, no backstory. We are left to our own devices. The world is huge, dead, and desolate, with no sign of life except for the few rabbits in abandoned towns. Dirt and mud covers the entirety of the map area. Beware is an indie game still in development, created by one person, Andreas Fadlina. It is an absolutely brilliant game set in a post-apocalyptic open world where the player embarks on a long journey of information gathering through exploration. As we get to drive around, we slowly discover that something strange has happened to this world. The story is not done through dialogue or instructions, it is instead up to the player to explore the world, interact with his characters, and through common sense, find out what is going on. One of the first things that you might notice about this world is how dark it is. The power is shut down. Your headlights and maybe the moon are your only sources of light. However, drive around long enough and eventually you do find power in a strange building patrolled by men in black. Enemies in Beware are far and few, but these strange looking goons will come after you. One of the first tasks that you are given in this game is won by a strange old woman that lives in the woods. This old woman is known as the Babka. If approached, runs away from the player and hides deeper in the woods. If, however, the Babka is able to see that the player is an outsider and not with the goons by seeing you being chased by them, she then becomes open to interacting with the player character. She does this by waving her light and signaling you to follow her. Once you do, the Babka leads you to her small hut in a quiet town hidden in the forest. Once inside, she shows you a photo of her, an older man, presumed to be her husband, standing near a light switch, signaling you your first task, to turn the power back on. As you are set on to find this power switch, you drive deeper and further into this desolate landscape. You come across giant diggers looming over hills of dirt their powerful lights creating a white glow that can be seen miles away. Strange futuristic autonomous trucks that feel out of place guard this area. Further on beyond this zone exists a giant mechanical labyrinth of structures, pipes, and metal. The labyrinth glows in orange light from all the light posts. A strange hazy orange light guides us in the distance. We arrive at a hill of light posts, scattered in unnatural fashion guiding us to climb the hill and find out what's at the top. But I'll let you find that out on your own. The game at its current state leaves off much mystery and questions to be asked about the world of the game and its story. What has happened to the world of Beware to leave it abandoned? Why are we as a player character here and what is our role within it? Who are the goons that stalk and chase us the entire game? What is going on with the Babka and her storyline? as well as questions about the mega corporation that seems to be excavating the land and polluting the sky. The beauty of Beware is the experience of exploring this desolate post-apocalyptic world and piecing together the clues along the way. The game's emphasis on exploration and discovery creates a sense of immersion that is both captivating and unsettling. It's a game that truly was able to capture that same feeling I got when I played that first Silent Hill game and somehow was able to create an entire experience around it. But within the hours between here and there exists an overwhelming liminality that always seems to exist. Thank you for coming with me on this surreal journey through dying worlds. I hope it's been fun. Tell me below your thoughts on this. I'm eager to read them. And I will see you all very soon.